Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the latest Shiny podcast. This is uh, Stephen Spector. Uh, and with me is Rob Hirschfeld, the uh, co-founder and CEO of Rackin. Well, uh, good morning, Rob. Hello, Stephen. Today, we're going to come back and talk a little bit about Ansible again, which we did in our first podcast. But this time, we're going to talk about uh, Ansible, uh, Kubernetes, um, you know, using these tools with digital rebar provision to install. So let's just, if we can, just kind of give everyone a quick review of what Ansible is. And I guess we should add in a review of what Kubernetes, Kubernetes is as well. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how long do we have? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> we have an hour. <laughs> let's do this fast. <laughs> no, we'll do very, very fast. So yeah. Ansible is a... Um, People cringe DevOps tool. It's, it's a configuration management orchestration tool. Basically, what it does is it takes existing servers from an inventory file and it presses a configuration, usually by SSH, onto those servers. So it runs a series of steps that result in the servers being configured to match the inventory file. So fundamental infrastructure is code. It's remarkable uh, compared to some of the other tools because it's very SSH focused. So you don't have an agent. Uh, most of the other tools in this space, like Chef, Puppet, or Salt, have agents, and then they pull their configurations. Ansible pushes their configuration. And it's very popular because it's simple. It's very declarative. People can understand how it works. And it's been, it's been really taking the configuration management world by storm. Okay. Kubernetes, quick, uh, quick overview on that, because clearly we can talk about that in 10 seconds. I, I'm a big fan of Kubernetes uh, and containerized workloads in general. Kubernetes is a lot of things, but very simply, it's a container scheduler. I actually prefer scheduler over the word orchestration. Basically, if you build a Docker container to run an application, containers, because usually applications have multiple containers, Kubernetes will run those containers in a cluster for you and they'll keep them up, it'll create replication sets, it'll do networking and load balancing for you and connect the containers within your app to each other in predictable ways. And it can do things like keep, um, give containers special privileges, it can keep them running, it can uh, scale them up and down. Uh, so there's a lot of, of actions that you want with containers that Kubernetes makes available for you. There's uh, several other platforms that do it Kubernetes has a huge amount of community momentum right now, and it, it seems like it's on, on the path to sort of build, be a consensus uh, top, top performer in this category. Okay, and Kubernetes is sponsored, I guess, basically from Google. Is that right? It was effectively a rewrite of Borg, which was their internal container scheduler. And so, yeah, they have a almost half, They've been decreasing their share of contribution as more people come in, um, but they're the dominant player. Red Hat um, has really come into this, into Kubernetes in a big way um, by using it to backend their OpenShift uh, platform as a service product. So is Kubernetes competitive with Docker or are they similar? Oh, Docker is a funny word in, in our space. Docker, the company, is, has, a, has, a, has a product, open source also, called Swarm. Mm -hmm. Swarm is uh, competitive with Kubernetes. Those overlap. Uh, the Docker engine uh, is used by both uh, okay. and several other things. So when people say Docker, lowercase d, they usually mean the container engine. And then and usually they use the tools on the client, which are Docker tools. Uh, to create Docker containers, small d, and push those into a, a container orchestration tool like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. This is one of the reasons why they encourage companies who are doing a lot of open source, like what Racken does, to not confuse the open source project with your own corporate brand. So Racken solves this problem. This nice little side. Digital Rebar is the open source project and brand, and it's very distinct from what Racken does as a commercial entity. And so as we bring out products, we try, we, we don't call them digital rebar things. What we do is we, we, we work through a different process. We, we came to talk about installing all this stuff. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. from, from my perspective, I've been on my PC, I just recently had to reinstall Windows. And I apologize to the Linux users, but unfortunately, uh, corporations that decide what operating systems we run. But I've been suffering enough just installing Windows. Um, my impression is installing this stuff on servers at scale is not a simple thing. You know, it's not as bad as people 
like to say it is. Kelsey Hightower, who is sort of the oracle of, uh, like Tower of Delphi oracle, yeah. of, of Kubernetes, writes a manual process called Kubernetes the hard way, which is harder than an automated install, but it's still not really that hard. But great marketing on his on his. There's there's several different ways to install Kubernetes depending on your target. Like if you're cloud only, there's some optimized patterns for that. We've been doing a lot of work all the way back into the earliest uh, 1.0 Kubernetes days as RackN using Ansible because um, we think Ansible's we, we're big fans of its simplicity and, and its directedness and, and for what Digital Rebar does. It's very easy for us to generate inventory files, uh, which then feed into an Ansible playbook, um, which is how the Ansible, all the Ansible infrastructure works. In the Kubernetes community, there is a dominant Ansible uh, set of scripts, which they call playbook, called Kubespray. Um, for a little while, it was known as uh, Cargo with a K. Everything mm-hmm. in Kubernetes is K. Um, but there was a trademark infringement, so they went back to what I consider a somewhat unfortunate name, which is Coop Spray. Yeah, um, I'm not a fan. I but can't say they, I'm they a fan of Coop Spray. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's it was a cute. Good name. It, it was cute in the early early days, but I I think that they made the right choice pulling back to the original name rather than trying to come up with yet another another name and, and figure out the branding. Anyway, naming aside, what if this is a very mature, many times used in production deployments. Ansible playbook, it does upgrades, it does secure deployments. Basically, it does, you know, it, it's almost, there's no drama. It's, you, you take an inventory file of your servers, you assign them to roles, you tell it to play, and it will happily install uh, Kubernetes, you know, following, you know, a, a whole bunch of same defaults. And if you need to change the defaults, then you override it. It uses a lot of community best practices because they've been evolving these playbooks for a long time. So it sets up a secure network uh, within the system. It uses Kubernetes containers to deploy Kubernetes, dominant pattern for how Kubernetes gets installed. It will integrate with Amazon or Google if you set up those defaults as targets. Fundamentally, it's, it, it, you know, they've done, the community's done the work. And I know a lot of companies who are using these playbooks as the way to install Kubernetes on cloud and on premises on VMware. It's really popular. Some people use um, something called Terraform, which I know you and, and Greg yeah. talked about in previous podcasts. They use Terraform to, to get the machine, sort of build the cluster and then use Kube spray Ansible to then install Kubernetes on it for us. Uh, and we've been doing this for a long time. So our, our V2 product embedded uh, this Ansible Kube spray in it, and we would run it, through our wizard, v- version three with provision, just as easy as a click button, but you have to type a command line. So, right, so, so digital rebar will produce um, a dynamic inventory of your nodes. You, you say these, you give them profile identifiers, uh, which translates into groups in Ansible directly. And then that inventory file will produce exactly the right configuration files needed to run Coop Spray, And it's literally that straightforward. You can just, you know, answer, uh, Ansible playbook run uh, the Coop Spray playbook with the dynamic inventory file, and it will build you a Kubernetes cluster. I'm making it sound like every, you know, magic. Yeah. It's not magic. Um, there's there's a ton of, of Ansible code in there. You have to worry about networking. So it's there's no free lunch when it comes to networking. So you, you do have to be aware when you're running this, like anything else that the nodes have, network access that they have their, their net, you know everything set up and you have ssh access of course but but adding digital rebar uh, provision the the new stuff coming out um you know what what's the benefit that uh, people are going to get they're saying okay i have my ansible kubernetes you know why should i go grab a digital rebar provision ansible doesn't set the machines up for you okay it assumes that you have built machines with an operating system on the network and all that's configured and and so our experience operationally is that that is not a, you know, hey, I do it with a USB stick running around to all of my servers and I'm done. All of these things um, really expect you to have a very carefully controlled configuration. And then you're going to want to apply, rinse and repeat, rebuild, rebuild the servers until you get things right, tear it down, reset. And so we're very, we're very useful for that 
gets even more interesting if you start expanding and contracting the clusters or you want to start making dynamic changes. You know, th those are ways that you can really move faster from how this works. So you could take out the Terraform piece that you're using and just apply it directly to your physical servers. Or if you're trying to build an edge data center, uh, those are places where we provide exactly the inventory and the edge, you know, you could deploy exactly on the edge with, with minimal extra stuff. All gonna come back to, can we eliminate complexity? Rebar provision is very simple, provide you with machines, you know, and very quickly, without a lot of headache, and then you add Ansible into that, and you're, you're just off to the races really, really quickly, very low drama. This is, this is what we want. We operators yeah. want to have transparent, easy operations that they know they can repeat. That's what we've been trying to do. Well, you need, we need to automate and simplify their life because it's complicated. I, I know you said, oh, yeah, these aren't too hard to do, but it, it's still complicated in the back end. So this process that we've been talking about with, you know, bringing in Kubernetes, Ansible, digital rebar provision, you know, is this becoming, I don't want to use the word standard, but is this kind of process becoming where we're heading to install Kubernetes or are there, I, I assume there's always someone else looking at new ideas as well. There, you know, there are a thousand flowers blooming for, some people hate that analogy. There's a, there's a lot of different yeah. Kubernetes installers. We still have new ones popping up and new ways to do it. And the community itself is redefining how configuration is done. So as Racken looks at this, while we, we're big fans of what Kubespray's been doing and, and mm -hmm. we recommend doing it, we're also exploring even simpler uh, ways to install Kubernetes there's a, a project called Kube Admin. It lets you build a cluster very, very quickly. So that is a possible way that um, using some of the new 3.1 features, you could bring up nodes and you could run a, two or three Kube Admin commands in the node without any configuration management, build the cluster, and then use some of the new things in the latest releases to bring workers uh, online and have them automatically join the cluster in a trusted way which would happen without any external configuration driver. Digital rebar could provision a machine and go, that this is a whole time, see, this is a whole time, it's a really exciting one. That would so probably I, be a whole other podcast we can talk about. Yeah, I think in a few weeks, I think we should definitely do another uh, podcast talk, talking about the new ideas and, and where all this is going. Again, if people are interested in getting digital rebar uh, provision, to work on all this stuff, rebar, I think it's rebar.digital, is that right? Or did I say it wrong today? Exactly. No, I that's think exactly right. That's our, our, I got our, it, our right. fancy top level domain. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the code is there. And, you know, Rob, you and Greg and some other community members are active out there. And there's tons of ways to talk to you. Um, you know, we encourage, especially enterprise user operators, looking at Kube Spray, Ansible, Terraform, all these solutions, trying to put it all together. And I think... I think you offer some expertise, you know, not just with digital rebar provision, but in the whole space and can really help people, uh, you know, figure out how to do all this, um, you know, efficiently and as, and as simple as possible. Well, Rob, thanks again talking today. Uh, you know, we went a little bit further into Ansible and, and Cube Spray. I do look forward to learning more about these other Kubernetes installs and hopefully we get some better names. Um, I'd like Cargo. I'm not so sure I'm a big fan of Cube Spray. To our listeners as well, listening in real time, uh, next week out on the uh, Digital Rebar Twitter handle, at Digital Rebar, we're going to be naming the uh, bear, for those of you who've seen the new uh, mascot, he's, he or she is quite cool. It's this little kind of metal bear. Is, is that how you describe it, Rob? Or? That's a bare metal bear. Bear exactly. metal bear. So we're going to name the bear metal bear. Uh, probably Monday or Tuesday next week, we're going to send out a, a Twitter uh, vote with a couple options. So if you're listening to this in real time next week, go out to Digital Rebar on Twitter and uh, vote to help us uh, name the bear. Rob, thanks again. And uh, we look forward to talking next week about uh, more simplified, complicated topics for uh, operators <laughs> trying to uh, scale and work in this new, I don't know, hybrid IT world, I guess is the way to look at it. Great way to say it. I'm looking <laughs> right. forward to it too.